Shinano started life as the third of the Yamato-class battleships, laid down in May 1940 to a modified design. This essentially trimmed the armour down a little bit and looked to have a new dual-purpose secondary battery made up of the excellent 100mm gun. As with the building of Yamato and Musashi, the Yokosuka yard was physically walled off and work went on in extreme secrecy. So secret, in fact, that we only know of two photos of the ship, and neither of them from the time period when she was under construction as a battleship. With the start of the Pacific aspect of World War II, work on the ship was suspended as it was felt she wouldn't be finished in time for the war, and the success of Japanese bombers against various battleships at Pearl Harbor and in the sinking of Force Z seemed to lessen the need for her. But the dock itself was quite useful, and so the decision was made to at least finish the hull so it could be launched and the dock therefore freed. Then the US Navy sank a good chunk of the Kido Butai at Midway, and suddenly it was all hands on deck to get as many new carrier decks into combat as soon as humanly possible. At this point, however, the Imperial Japanese Navy still had a useful core of carriers, both of the relatively speaking high capacity conversions Hio and Junyo, as well as the large and powerful Shikaku pair, plus the new Taiho hopefully about to be launched. In addition, many Unryu class hulls were about to be laid down. Between these and a variety of smaller carriers, it seemed that the Japanese Navy didn't strictly need another frontline carrier just yet, but the casualties that were being suffered by the air groups suggested that replenishing them would be very useful. By moving the spares and replacements off board of the frontline ships, then the frontline vessels themselves could carry slightly more aircraft, which might make their strikes more effective and actually reduce casualties. And so was born the idea to make Shinano into a giant support carrier, the armour being in theory very useful in protecting the huge amount of ammunition and aviation fuel the ship would be carrying. The hangar deck would be of open design, but with roller shutters able to close it off against the elements and the occasional bit of splinter damage. The flight deck would be armoured against the thousand pound bombs that the US Navy was so fond of using to cripple the Japanese Navy's carrier arm. And the massive hangar deck, which was aided by the Yamato class's great beam, would allow the carriage of over a hundred replacement aircraft, in addition to the ship's own 42 strong air complement, which in theory would consist of 18 fighters, 18 strike aircraft, and six recon aircraft. On paper, she could have actually been a formidable fleet carrier, but by the time she entered service, the Japanese Navy would be struggling to fill her own small intended air group, let alone anything else, and there were scarcely any other carriers left afloat to support anyway. As the conversion went on, more lessons were incorporated into the design. Taiho's loss in 1944 to a build-up of gasoline fumes meant that significant efforts were taken to improve ventilation and airflow, although in a slightly odd turn of events for a ship that was originally supposed to replace the 5-inch with the 100mm, she ended up armed with eight twin mounts of the inferior Type 89 5-inch gun, along with over 100 Type 96 25mm weapons, which I suppose at least gave the crew something to do in the event of an air attack. This was supplemented by the addition of a dozen launchers for the 120mm anti-aircraft rocket, a slightly smaller calibre throwback to the British unrotated projectile launchers found at the start of the war, albeit without the aerial minefield idea. Now, as mentioned earlier, Japan was losing what carrier strength she had left at a rather rapid rate, and it was attempted to get her finished rather faster. As originally designed, 150,000 shaft horsepower driving four screws would have taken the ship to 27 knots. In theory, the slightly lighter final conversion would have been somewhat quicker, but she never actually went on speed trials, so her actual top speed will remain unknown. Still only partially completed, the ship was ordered to leave Yokosuka for Kure in late November 1944, as US recon aircraft had flown over her anchorage, and Japanese Navy High Command wanted her moved before what they saw as inev an inevitable follow-up airstrike came in. With many watertight elements inoperable, or even physically missing, and those that were there often not yet tested, her captain was less than happy with the idea, but orders were orders, and so with a complement of 50 Kamikaze missiles aboard, she set out on the 28th of November 1944. Unfortunately for her, this led her right into the path of the submarine USS Archerfish. 
Following Shinano on radar, Archerfish was herself spotted in return, but it seems that Shinano was worried about the submarine actually being a decoy that was designed to draw off its escorts, and thus refused to dispatch them to attack. Then, for some reason, at around 0300 in the morning of the 29th, the carrier turned towards the US sub, and then zigzagged, presenting a full broadside. By this point, Archfish had submerged, waiting for an attack opportunity, and upon being given the perfect setup, all six torpedoes in her forward tubes were launched. This being 1944, the torpedoes stood a decent chance of working, and indeed four out of the six hit, all of which detonated. At first, though, it seemed that the giant carrier would actually survive these hits, and she motored on away without so much as breaking stride. But this actually proved to be a mistake. The force of the ship's motion forced water into the hull through the holes at an accelerated rate. Design flaws in the ship's protection were compounded by the simple lack of many of the basic watertight features and pumps, and about eight hours after she was hit, after some rather late desperate work to save her, the giant ship rolled over and sank, taking about 60% of the approximately 2,500 men aboard with her. As it turns out, the voyage was actually completely pointless. The US Navy had no idea Shinano even existed, and it took some time for Archerfish's captain to be awarded a belated Navy Cross for what turned out to be the largest warship so far sunk by a submarine. So she should have just stayed in Yokosuka. Thus far, no one, as far as I'm aware, has rediscovered the wreck. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to comment on the pinned post for dry dock questions.